Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. Car vlog. Yes, I'm gearing up to do more car vlogs because I'm about to uh, head out on a long trip. Yeah, four months abroad. Four and a half months abroad. Mm. Pretty good. All right, let's just jump into it. Developers should always be looking at new technologies that might be advantageous to them. Now, the thing is, the new technologies are not so much in the languages these days or the stacks. In the old days, you might want to jump from Java to C Sharp, or you might jump from uh, Ruby to Python Django, uh, or to Node, of course, Node.js. That's the old days. As I've been saying for a while now, the differences between the languages and their respective platforms, eh, they're not so different. I don't see huge advantage with one or over the other. It's all very circumstantial. So let me break that down. So for example, if you're doing an app that requires high concurrency, the reflexive first choice would, might be Node.js because that's what it's, it, 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 uh, it does really well there. On the other hand, if you are building a freelance-based business where you're going to be doing a lot of small websites, uh, small little web apps, quick output, probably some content management systems like WordPress or Joomla, etc. Then obviously the obvious choice is PHP. And I could go on and on and on. So the stacks in the languages and the stacks in the languages that you choose, Java, C sharp, PHP, you know, um, Python, JavaScript, it's very circumstantial. As a default, I can tell you from having done this stuff since 94, as a default these days, and I'm recording this in November 2023, these days, my default is PHP for web apps, for web apps, because it's easy to deploy, easy to learn, and it scales very well, it's very consistent, it's very solid. That's my default, but it doesn't mean I would always choose that stack over, say, JavaScript node, etc. But going back to the original premise of this video, the languages, the stacks are not really where you're going to find the advantage these days. They're all pretty, pretty competitive. The advantage is going to be found in the integration of systems. The integration of systems. The problem that we've always faced as developers is that you'd have to find some tool here, some tool from this vendor here, some tool from this person here. If you want to be efficient in your workflows, you have to develop an integrated suite of tools that work well together. That's been one of Microsoft's strengths, by the way. They would bring together a whole suite of tools so that you could work within their context. Now, the problem with the Microsoft tool suites, uh, that is that if you ever, they have an, a path, if you will, that they define. And if you ever broke out of that path, the whole thing would fall apart pretty quick. That was my experience. I took an app once that I had written in Java with my own uh, framework. It was Java, JS, Servlets, JSP, Pojos. Pojos is plain old Java objects. So I had my own framework that I developed. And I developed my app in this framework. And uh, then I said, yeah, let's try it. Just learn, let's learn .NET. So how do you learn .NET? Do you go do a tutorial? No, you build something. So since C Sharp .NET was basically modeled after Java, and they're both in the C family of languages, you know, C, C++, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, they're all the C languages. To a certain extent, PHP is C adjacent, I would say. Anyhow, uh, so I rewrote that app entirely with JavaScript, excuse me, with C sharp.net to see how it would be. And as I suspected, with C sharp, which was capable, .NET was capable, C sharp.net was capable, with that framework, I realized that um, I was exchanging one set of problems in Java 
for another set of problems in C-sharp.net. So there's no clear major advantage doing it in C-sharp.net over Java. It depends on, in some areas, the Java implementation was far easier and better. In some areas, the C-sharp.net was better and easier. Again, in that circumstance, for that particular application, whether I chose to do it with Java or C-sharp.net, would be entirely based on what the rest of the infrastructure, what the rest of the infrastructure was comprised of. Meaning, if I was developing an app at a company that had a big investment in other Microsoft technologies, it makes sense to use .NET. If the company was not heavily invested in Microsoft, then it would make no sense to use .NET. So the key to becoming a more effective developer these days to be, have a more effective freelance business or profitable, a more profitable agency is to have tools that are integrated that work seamlessly together. Whether you put it together through a disparate set of tools, I'm going to use Slack here, use GitHub for my source control, I'm going to use, uh, I use .NET for my framework, or I use Node.js and Express for my, my, um, my web stack, you know, et cetera, and so on. You want to have it all flow together so yeah, there's no indecision. There's no thinking about, hmm, what should I use here? Hmm, what should I use there, you know, for this? So what we're seeing now is certain vendors, they're now coming out just like Microsoft, but some are coming out with some pretty sophisticated integrated solutions from communication to uh, front-end development, back-end development, um, Infrastructure in terms of uh, libraries and so on. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So it's kind of like taking an MVC framework like a PHP Laravel, Python Django, uh, you know, Java Boot. That's that's an example of that this integration of components and so forth. Your data layer, your data access layer, your front end GUI, your authentic authentication components, your 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 uh, UI widgets. That's one level. But around that, you have a whole bunch of other things that you can put into the, uh, into the pipeline. Anyway, that's my thought on that. So if you're looking to find advantage in development, it's not necessarily the language. The language is not so much of the issue. As I said, the language choice is really circumstantial. The key to it is the integration of services that will allow you to uh, streamline your pipeline of development. That's all. That is what's going to make the big difference. All right. I hope you found this video useful. If you don't know who I am, I'm Uncle Steph. I uh, teach people how to code in a car in other places too. I've been a developer since 94. I've been, that's why I've developed my first website for my own company. It had nothing to do with tech. And I got my first contract as a freelancer in 95 for a legal firm, in fact. But I really got into it uh, big time, bigly in 96 when I sold out my first business and I went full time uh, freelance developer. And I've worked on all kinds of projects for publicly traded companies, a small, medium sized business, and a small, medium sized business, SME. Um, and then I developed my own SaaS products. I've had a two or three. I, I can think of two right now, but I think I've had a third. But anyway, right now I run studioweb.com, which is a SaaS tool for schools teach them it's a it's an educational product it's curriculum and uh, alpha uh, it's curriculum and and uh, classroom management system and a whole bunch of stuff anyhow that's one of the things i do so i'm one of the few youtubers who actually has a uh, SaaS product that's actually viewable on the web you can see it's being used now by government institutions one of the things I do, though, at UncleSteph.com is I mentor people in the ways of code and development in a freelance and SaaS development. We have all kinds of people in the program. We have about 60% of the people in the program are total noobs, so you know absolutely nothing. I assume you know nothing except maybe how to read and write. But beyond that, that's you're good. You, you don't need anything else to join the boot camp mentoring program. But I also have... The other 40% are pro developers, up to people with you know four or five years experience. And I have people with, uh, who are CTOs, chief technology officers in the program, because we cover both ends of the spectrum. I teach the absolute fundamentals, which are crucial for anybody to get ahead. 
um, and to start off their their uh, their careers. But I also cover uh, concepts and topics, and we solve problems that uh, only somebody with ten plus years experience would be able to to uh, teach and convey. You know, there's a lot of something I learned in boxing a long time ago. So my boxing coach had an amateur record at 77 and two, which is world class. The guy was, anyway, he, and I did martial arts for over 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, fairly consistently, different styles, different teachers. What I learned in martial arts was that the difference between people who are really good at what they do and people who are not so good is in the subtleties, is in the subtleties. So my boxing coach, because he had such a stellar record of winning over the years, he was able to teach us a bunch of subtleties that no other teacher I had taught. The only other teacher who was really good at the subtleties was this guy, uh, my wrestling, wrestling coach. I only trained with him part-time. He taught a lot of subtleties as well. So it's not a coincidence, not a coincidence that the two best teachers I've ever had in fighting arts were they themselves extre extremely successful at what they did. They had the subtleties. They understood the subtleties. There you go. I hope you found this video useful. If you disagree with any of my comments, uh, my thinking, if you have any questions, feel free to post below. Cheers, guys.